Well, here we are down in Semple Close. It's wonderful just to get off the beaten track from the high street. And uh, sometimes, particularly when it's rainy, it can be quite dirty and gloomy down here. But, you know, sometimes it's like that in history. And so it has been in the Scottish history. The reason we brought you down here, because there are some inscriptions here. Praise be to the Lord, my God, my strength and my Redeemer, the year 1638. There's another one over there, Latin, just above the door. And uh, Streetman's terms, translation, loose translation, basically says the best place to be is in heaven. Well, something happened in 1638, which was critical for Scottish history. It was the signing of the National Covenant. And what that was all about was, bear in mind we'd heard earlier about the Reformation, a hundred years beforehand, and what happened was the church here broke free from the rule of the Pope in Rome. And they loved their freedom here in Scotland. And there came a time when the Scots people began to think that the king was seeking to exercise his authority and control through the bishops in the high church of England. And he didn't, they didn't like it at all, because they thought what would happen is step by step, step by step, slowly, they would be taken back to Rome and they would lose their freedom. And they'd paid for that freedom in lives. So they signed this document, the National Covenant, and it basically said that Christ is the head of the church, not the king. We will obey what the Bible says, not what other things or what other people say. We'll be good citizens, but there, were, there was a list of things they could not accept from Rome at the time. And the first document was signed in Greyfriars Kirk, right in the building there. And then copies were sent to the, the Taylor's Hall in the Cowgate and the private home on the Royal Mile. And copies after that were sent throughout the whole of Scotland and thousands signed it. Now, at first, there was no real problem, but eventually began to develop and grow and grow. We're entering now what's called the killing times between 1661 and 1688, when it became very dangerous to be a Christian. Ministers were thrown out of their houses, prayer meetings were banned. You could be shot on sight if you, ha if you carried a Bible. The people here writing this inscription, obviously very wealthy people, but it was almost like they were saying, this is what we stand for, this is what we believe in, come and get us, we don't care, we're going to stand for this. So we are now entering this difficult time, the killing times, in which over 18,000 Christians perished for their faith in Scotland, including over 100 being executed down in the grass market near here. It was a time of tremendous upheaval, of danger, of bravery, miracles amidst horrendous suffering. James White had just been in a prayer meeting. When soldiers came, they took him outside and they shot him. Then they cut off his head and they used it as a makeshift football on the village green. David Steele, he'd just been in a prayer meeting in his own cottage with his family and friends. The soldiers were tipped off and, and they surrounded the cottage and called him out, promising him a fair trial. But instead, they broke their promise, put their guns to his head, and blew his head right off in front of his wife and child, leaving his wife Mary to pick up the pieces of his skull in a cloth and crying out, The archers have shot at me, my husband, but they could not reach thy soul. It has flown far away like a dove and is at rest. Archibald Campbell, the Earl of Argyle, was sentenced to be executed down in the grass market. Now, in those days, they used to call the guillotine the maiden. So before he was executed, he knelt down and he kissed the wooden part. And he said, that's the sweetest maiden I've ever kissed. Well, in those days, they used to take the heads and the hands of the covenanters and place them outside the Netherbow port, which was a city gate, as a warning to other people. Often they'd do this in a position of prayer, in mockery of the believer's faith. John Rory was an amazing man. He was just so for the joy and couldn't wait to get to heaven. He would have loved that scripture up there, that writing. And his time came, the executioner called for him to have his right hand chopped off. So he was so excited, he put his neck on the block instead. <laughs> and uh, the executioner swore at him and said, your right hand, not your neck. So he calls back, well, you can have my right hand and my neck and every limb of my body for the sake of Christ and his cause. Well, they chopped off his right hand, after which he held it up to heaven, shouting, this blood now seals our covenant! And the crowd was ecstatic. See, those early days, they observed the bravery and the solid faith of these Christians under extreme pressure. And they marveled because of their certainty of heaven, of being with Christ. 
And they were given the freedom to preach or pray or sing a psalm or something. And the more people observed, the more their numbers multiplied. So the government began to get really concerned about this. So they thought, the only way we can shut them up is through the loud drumming of the soldiers. But even despite drowning them out, it didn't make any difference. Still, their numbers multiplied. There were, of course, miraculous escapes. The Reverend Alexander Peden was a prophet amongst them, and he used to evade capture by wearing different kinds of disguises. Also, God would warn him when soldiers were coming. There was one time when Peden was out in the open fields. There were thousands gathered around to listen. Then a group of soldiers came and surrounded the group. Peden knelt on the ground and he prayed. And then, from a clear blue sky, a thick fog descended. It was so thick that the soldiers couldn't even see each other, and all of the Covenanters were able to escape. Not all of the Covenanters took this meekly. They said, this is not just about religious freedom. This is about freedom of speech. Here in Scotland, we've got to do something. And they took to arms. And there were several battles, the best known being the Battle of Bothwell Brig in 1679. They lost. 1,400 of them were captured and taken and put into the Greyfriars Kirk graveyard in what was really like a makeshift concentration camp. Of those 1,400, all perished except for 48, either executed or through disease, or ones that were sold into slavery died in a shipwreck. And the 48 who survived managed to swim to safety. It was a very turbulent time here in Edinburgh and in Scotland. Back and forth it went. Oliver Cromwell was here. Democracy was in its early stages and hard fought over. Finally, William of Orange came in 1688, what was called the Glorious Revolution. And religious freedom, to a great extent, had finally come to Scotland. But at what a price! <laughs>